we have any former Marines uh, in, the, in the congregation today? A couple? We had, we had one at the last Mass. One thing I found about, about the, oh, do, do we have one over there? All right. The birthday of the Marine Corps, I believe, is November 21st. Am I correct? I got that right. And one thing I found about for, the Marines do that I really like is it's customary to go up to, a, to someone who served in the Marine Corps on the birthday of the Marine Corps and wish to them a happy birthday. Because you, you recognize that the, 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 the founding of that movement is something that's celebrated by all of its members. What does this have to do with anything? Pentecost is the birthday of the church. And I think so often we don't really celebrate it as it truly is. I mean, this is one of the most important feasts on the liturgical calendar. I was talking to Damian Hanley, who handles all of our communications. You'll see him running around taking some videos and, and things in this moment and other key moments in the year and the life of our, of our parish. I said, Damien, one thing you'll find is we don't play here at St. Elizabeth Seton. You know, when we have a feast day, we want to we do it its proper honor and justice to show the, the, the beauty and the glory and the mystery of what this is about. And what we celebrate today is the Holy Spirit coming to the church, but the church becoming animated by the power of the Holy Spirit, right? The Holy Spirit existed before Pentecost Sunday. In case we don't know, right? God, the Holy Spirit's always existed. Right from the very beginning of creation, we see in the first chapter that the Spirit of God hovered over the waters. But it's on Pentecost that we recognize that the church began to allow herself to be animated by the Holy Spirit. And throughout the history of the church, different, and, and throughout scriptures even, different symbols have been used to show the power of the Holy Spirit. So, for example, of course, we know that on Pentecost, tons, tongues of fire fell upon the apostles as they were gathered in that upper room. If you go to Rome, uh, one of the biggest churches in Rome is Our Lady Queen of Martyrs, known as the, formerly known as the Pantheon, which is a huge round church that was an ancient Roman temple. And in the top of the church is an opening, a, a round opening. And on the Feast of Pentecost, uh, at, following the Mass, rose petals are dropped through that opening to show the power of the fire of the Holy Spirit falling down. In fact, in churches throughout Europe and Germany, a lot of them had these holes in the roof that they actually called Holy Ghost holes. And they would drop rose petals sometimes, in some cases burning straw, that would make me really nervous, but uh, to show the power of the Holy Spirit. But what I like about the fire as being the symbol of the Holy Spirit is fire is hard to contain. Fire is hard to control. Fire is an action. Another uh, symbol for the Holy Spirit um, that should be rather obvious today is the symbol of a dove. And yes, this dove is real, <clears throat> if you're wondering. <clears throat> and we're going to release this dove and several other doves after Mass, which is another Pentecost custom that comes about. Why? Again, we can't contain the Holy Spirit. We can't keep the Holy Spirit bottled up. In Ireland and Scotland, in fact, in, on, the, on the Celtic Isles, you know what the symbol of the Holy Spirit was? It's not a dove, but a goose. Why? Because goose are, if you've ever worked on a farm, goose are not, geese are not quiet, passive birds. They're honking, they're loud, they're noisy. They can't be contained. And this is what we need to understand about the power of the Holy Spirit, is the Holy Spirit exists to breathe life into the church. Right? In the creed, we profess that the Holy Spirit is the Lord and giver of life. The Holy Spirit, my brothers and sisters, is a person. As much as I like Star Wars, the Holy Spirit is not the force. The Holy Spirit is a person who moves us. But the Holy Spirit longs to give us power. It gives us po We have the power of the Holy Spirit. Think about this for a moment if you haven't before. The scriptures tell us this. The same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you and in me. The same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives inside of you and inside of me. Why? So that we can give testimony to the power of Jesus Christ. As our second reading says, no one can say Jesus is Lord except in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit moves us to faith. It's the Holy Spirit who gives life to the church. The Holy Spirit is the principal actor in all the sacraments of the church. At Mass, we pray, Lord, send your Spirit upon these gifts of bread and wine so they can become the body and blood of Christ. In confession, I say, 
uh, I say the Lord has sent us, the Holy Spirit has given us the authority for the forgiveness of sins as we hear proclaimed in the scriptures today. It is the Holy Spirit, if you will, who's the principal actor in all of these sacraments because he breathes life into the church. But for what reason? Not so we can be some insular, self-centered, self-focused community, but so that we can go out and proclaim the gospel. These are why the Holy Spirit gives us his gifts. And you remember those gifts, many of you learned about some of them at your confirmation, right? Wisdom, knowledge, understanding, counsel, judgment, fortitude, piety, and fear of the Lord. I counted eight, but there's seven, I promise. Those are the sanctifying gifts of the Holy Spirit. They enable us to be focused on the mission that the Lord has given us, but there's also many, many other gifts of the Holy Spirit. We saw them in, in, in the gospel today. The apostles spoke, it, spoke in their own language, but everyone was able to hear them speaking in their native language. The gift of tongues has been seen throughout the scriptures. The gift of prophetic words, of being able to speak the word of God directly to someone. We see also gifts of hospitality and welcome that are useful in the church. That's a gift of the Holy Spirit. The gift of teaching, the gift of administration. These are called the charismatic gifts of the Holy Spirit. And, and all of us are called to avail ourselves to those charisms, to those gifts, right? Charis, charisms, gifts of the Holy Spirit, aren't just for those people who identify themselves as charismatic Catholics. Every Catholic is charismatic because we are all called to ask the Holy Spirit to move and work in our lives. And you might say, Father, I understand this, but I don't see the, the awesome things happening through the power of the Holy Spirit that we read about in the Acts of the Apostles. And I'll say, if you want to see the Holy Spirit do amazing things in your life, you gotta set him free. You gotta let him take control. And the way you do that is by aligning yourself with the mission of the church. The mission of the church allows the Holy Spirit to be free, not to be stifled. Today we gave little kids like doves as they came in. I noticed they're being really good because I was expecting dove fights. I was. But again, a sign of the freedom of the movement of the power of the Holy Spirit. Free the Spirit, and you do that by saying, Lord, I avail myself to the mission of the church. Recognizing that it's your job, our job, that the, 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 the disciple of Jesus Christ has one job, and that's to make more disciples. It's your job to give testimony to the power of the Lord Jesus Christ in your own lives. And you have the freedom to do that. And as you know, it's become so much easier because the world is already giving testimony to its own craziness. You know, as you heard me say, I don't have to convince you the world's crazy anymore. The world convinces us itself that it's crazy. We now need to convince the world that Jesus Christ is the answer to the craziness of the world. And it's only in the Holy Spirit that we can do that. And this is why a lot of times people will, will say it's the Holy Spirit where they really mean it's, it's a... Um, it's a, uh, it's a feeling, a guess, or a hunch. But here's the thing. The Holy Spirit also draws us together. It's the Holy Spirit that unifies us as a church. As we see proclaimed in the scriptures today, right? Jesus gives an authority to his apostles. He gives them the authority to forgive sins. The authority is given to them to preach. And if you keep reading the book of Acts where our reading leaves off, it's Peter who goes out and proclaims to the world. Peter, the successor of the apostles. If the Holy Spirit is calling you to defy the teachings of the church, it's not the Holy Spirit. I promise. The Holy Spirit is a unifying principle in the church. The Holy Spirit testifies to the truth, and the truth is one. So here's how we know the Holy Spirit speaks to us. Through the scriptures, through the traditions of the church of which the church fathers are a timely witness, through prayer in our own lives, through the celebration of the sacraments, through the witness of the lives of the saints, through the apostolic activity, the proclaiming of the gospel, and again, through the charisms, the gifts that he gives you and I. <clears throat> if it's apart from these things, it's not the Holy Spirit. Let us learn to listen to the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Let us today declare that the Holy Spirit has control over our lives. Let's relinquish control over ourselves and give it to the Holy Spirit that he can empower us to be witnesses to Jesus Christ. And you watch, you align yourselves with the Holy Spirit and you watch those charisms fly out. You watch those gifts that the Holy Spirit longs to give to you to be used. So today, friends, as we celebrate this Eucharist and we'll have our dove release after Mass 
And those of you know that something else might be coming at the end of Mass, it's pretty amazing. Why are all these things here? To show us that we're giving the Holy Spirit permission to work in our lives so that we, his disciples, the church, can become animated and can be the witnesses of Jesus Christ throughout Golden Gate, throughout Naples, throughout Collier County, throughout the state of Florida, throughout these United States of America, and unto the ends of the earth.